There is nothing I love more than when card effects are really, really weird. I'm talking effects that you have to read more than once to even try and figure out what the hell you do with it, and what the designers were thinking when they made them. Every card game tends to have them, from Magic to Yu-Gi-Oh. It's especially true for the longer running games, and are most common in the earlier days of designs when the creators are still trying to figure out what to do with the game and find its identity. In this video, we'll be looking at some of the weirdest fucking effects that have ever graced the many card games out there. But you know what's weird? Not subscribing to this channel. You should fix that by scrolling down and clicking that subscribe button, and leave a comment below about your favorite weird effect from a card game is. Anyways, obligatory plug out of the way, let's get to the good stuff. Let's start with where I personally started getting really into card games, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! has no shortage of weird effects and plenty of joke cards, which don't worry, those will be getting their own video later. But to begin this video, let's start off with Parasite Parasite. And if you've never seen the original art, well, here you go. I'll spell you having to look at that and use the censored one instead. It's very rare to just <laughs> slap a fucking card into your opponent's deck because, like, you have to deal with the sleeves and potentially losing them because you both forgot to take it out, it's just a whole mess. But that's what Parasite Parasite does, and when your opponent draws it, it's automatically special summoned to the board and makes them take a thousand damage and turns all monsters into insects. This was a pretty big plot point in the anime, but in the actual game this hardly means anything where you can just blink it off. The effect to put it into your opponent's deck only triggers on a flip effect as well, meaning an opponent either has to attack into it or you have to flip it yourself on your turn. Is it good? No, not even a little. If you're really that scared of the bug, you can just negate it like using bug spray. Another fun one is Yujo Friendship. It makes you offer a handshake to the opponent and if they sake it, both life points become half the combined total of both players. But as a kicker, it combos with the card Unity, or if you have that card in your hand and show it to your opponent, they cannot say no. Unity's effect has pretty much nothing to do with Yujo Friendship, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about handshakes, baby! And I bet you're wondering, what happens if they say no to the handshake? Then nothing happens. However, there are people who use Unity to force the handshake, but will then do heinous things like putting their hands on the pants or spitting into the palm before holding out the hand for the handshake. So the opponent theoretically have to concede if they didn't shake the hand. Of course this is fucking stupid and didn't actually work. There is a real ruling where the opponent doesn't have to physically shake your hand, but just agree to the idea of shaking a hand. No one actually plays this card because, well, why would you? Unless you're me like a year ago. A classic of weird Yu-Gi-Oh! is Convulsion of Nature. It's a continuous spell that makes most players play with their decks upside down and the top deck is constantly revealed. Is there a benefit to this? Not really. Although some people did play it in the spiral deck where you have to name a specific type of card from the top of your deck to get an effect. Of course this was terrible, but was a funny way to get actual use out of the card as fucking absurd as it is. Want some added stupidness? Mix it in with Grave Lure while it's on the field so there's a face down card in the deck as well. Convulsion of Nature technically gives you information on what your opponent will have, but in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, reaching even turn 4 is pretty rare nowadays so it's not even that useful of information. Speaking of turns, what if you can move the turn count forward? Good news, you can with Pyro Clock of Destiny. Bad news, all it does is move the turn count forward. Unlike something like Hearthstone where turns actually matter because your mana pool gets larger, nothing like that exists in Yu-Gi-Oh. In fact, there is literally one actual use for the card, and that's to make it slightly easier to win with Final Countdown since it's a card that actually specifically cares about the amount of turns that have passed. It doesn't reset the turn, so it's not like you get another draw phase or anything, and it's not really useful for anything. Even in Final Countdown, you'd rather just play a stall card than play a card that makes the win condition very slightly faster. I question what they were thinking, and I also question how weird question is. It makes your opponent have to name the exact monster at the bottom of your graveyard, and if they guess it right, it gets banished, and if they're wrong, you get a special summon it. Your opponent is explicitly forbidden from checking the order of cards in your graveyard, despite that normally being public knowledge. So if your opponent wasn't paying attention, then sucks to be them and you might just get a free monster out of it. Why use a Monster Reborn that might fail if your opponent is paying attention instead of just playing Monster Reborn? Duh. You ever want to win an entire match? Because you could with Victory Dragon. It needed to be Tribute Summon, but if it attacked your opponent's life points and brings it to zero, you won the match. Note this doesn't say game, it says match. A match of Yu-Gi-Oh! is a best 2 out of 3 game, meaning if you won game 1 with an attack from Victory Dragon, you didn't need to play games 2 or 3 because you won on the spot. While this effect appears on multiple prize cards, and Victory Dragon itself was a prize card, it was actually legal for a little bit. You could, in a legal tournament setting, use this card, 
to just skip the entire function of a tournament by not playing two or three games. It only lasted a very small amount before it was immensely banned because I mean, a card that circumvents the entire layout of a tournament is pretty ridiculous. We spent a fair bit in Yu-Gi-Oh, so let's jump over to a different game, Pokemon. And let's look at probably my favorite card ever printed in that game, Misty's Duel. It makes both you and your opponent play a game of rock, paper, scissors, and the winner shuffles the hand into the deck and gets 5 cards back. So if you're low on cards, you can maybe draw 5 cards, but if you lose, you give that advantage to your opponent. My favorite part is on the card itself, it gives you the option to flip a coin if you don't know how to play rock, paper, scissors. I get it's a kid's game because it's Pokemon, but like, who the hell doesn't know how to play rock, paper, scissors by the time they know how to start learning how to play a card game? The gym leader cards were weird, and perhaps nothing was weirder than Blaine's quiz from the lot. This was actually a 3 card cycle. They all make your opponent have to guess something about a card you put from your hand face down. If they guess right, they draw cards, and if they guess wrong, you get to draw the cards. Number 3 makes you name an attack and the opponent has to guess the name of the card with that attack you have face down. Number 2 has to guess what kind of card you put face down. But the most fucking asinine card possibly in all of Pokemon is Blaine's Quiz number 1, which makes you guess the length of the Pokemon you put down. Pokemon has this very small text box that tells you the length and weight of a Pokemon that almost no one pays attention to because, well, why would you? But Blaine's quiz number one sure as hell made you think about it. All your opponent had to do to go off of was its name and nothing else. You may as well just read draw two cards because your opponent remembered the length of Pokemon somehow? They probably just deserve the win. Another weird card is Unknown F from Great Encounters. If it's on the bench, you can put a coin down on the table with your hand covering it to draw a card if your opponent doesn't guess if it's heads or tails correctly. Why you can't flip a coin normally is beyond me because it's equally as random, and it's a super weird addition and a step that doesn't actually need to be on the card. Why make the opponent guess when you can just flip the coin and accomplish the same fucking thing? But hey, you get to play with a coin in a way that's not just flipping, I guess. That's cool. Technically, it didn't say how you have to face it, so you could theoretically put it on your side. What'll happen? I don't know. Maybe it'll destroy a gnome because you cheated. Not just a weird effect, but a weird fucking name, Tickling Machine, can completely hand loop your opponent for an entire turn if you hit heads. Otherwise, your turn just immediately ends. It's not the most outlandish effect out there, but I just wanted to hide the fact that there's a fucking official Pokemon card named fucking Tickling Machine, which is crazy to me. Look at Mr. Mime, he even knows what an awful idea that is. The gym leader sets were just filled with weird effects, like Lieutenant Surge's secret plan. The card made it so you could put any card in your hand face down onto your bench, where you basically treat it like a Pokemon. But if it's ever targeted by basically anything that cares about damage, it gets flipped face up. If it's not a Pokemon, it goes to the discard pile. What's interesting is you can put any card there. It can be an energy card, a trainer card, you name it. And even though it couldn't actually, well, do anything, you could still attach energy to it. So there's a legal way to put energy on an energy card. Why would you want to do that? Uh, anyways, you do lose the game if your bench is empty, so I guess technically it can buy you a turn? It's not a particularly good use for the card since you can just play another Pokemon card instead of this card, but that's just not as cool. Let's move away from Pokemon and go into the last of the main three, Magic the Gathering, which also happens to be the longest running of the lot. As such, the amount of weird ass effects is plentiful, like Chaos Orb from the original set. You would have to flip the card of a height of at least one foot, and have to rotate at least once, and it would destroy whatever cards it landed on. This was obviously asinine, in fact it's one of the only cards banned in Magic's vintage format where basically every card is legal, and the broken ones can still be played at one. There are only two cards in this format that aren't illegal in every format that are banned, which are Falling Star, which is basically the same effect, and Teherasad, which is also weird in and of itself, because it makes you play a sub-game of Magic within your own game, which is equally as weird. This card's basically a two-mana to play an extra game where half your life is on the line. Every card game has specific hate cards. Magic has targeted color hate like Red Elemental Blasts, but what if we go more specific? Yu-Gi-Oh! has cards that count as specific popular cards, like White Hole that count as Dark Hole, but what if you could just erase an entire set? Because that's what City in a Bottle does. The card makes it so any card that's printed from Magic's Arabian Night set is immediately sacrificed and you can't play any cards from that set. It was printed in Arabian Night, so if you ever did like a draft of it, and you had City in a Bottle, you literally can't play the game anymore. So whoever has the most cards in the library wins because it becomes a game whoever mills out first loses. There are a few other cards that have this kind of same effect, but this is the only one where the effect is static. We all love goblins, so we all love goblin game here. When I first saw this card, I thought this was from the unset magic does, which are pretty much just joke sets with joke cards. But nope, it's legal and you can play it in multiple formats. It makes it so every player has to hide at least one item and then they're all revealed at the same time. Then whoever reveals the least items they hid loses half their life rounded up but also everyone loses life equal to the number of items they had to reveal. It's a super weird card because there's not 
really many rulings worth it. You can just look at your opponent to see how much stuff they're hiding, so you can hide just a bit more. It's probably the most ludicrous burn spell ever printed, all for 7 mana, which is a very big cost for those who don't play magic. It doesn't really say the extent of what items you can hide either, so I guess basically everything's on the table? Hide your deck, why not? Now let's look at Lightning Storm. No, not that one. This card seems innocent enough to the Undrained Eye. It does X plus 3 damage to a creature or player, where X is the amount of charge counters on it. But this is an instant with an activated ability. These don't really exist. In fact, it's the only card in the game with a ruling that requires it to be on the stack in order to actually use. It's kind of like a Yu-Gi-Oh card saying you can only use this card ability if it's on a chain. Anyways, it lets any player discard land cards to put counters on it, so if you're playing something like Two-Headed Giant, which is a 2v2 game mode, you can both load up counters onto it. It's a strangely unique effect in Magic, and really the only card of its kind. The card itself is okay at best, but you can definitely confuse whoever you play it against though, which is always entertaining. Moving on to Seared Fate. It's a strange card because it essentially makes you play with someone else's deck. It makes it so instead of drawing from your deck, instead you exile a card from someone else's and you can play those cards as if they were in your hand. This includes any kind of draw, including a draw for turn. You basically cut off having access from your deck in favor of playing someone else's. That's one way to settle a command the power of a spoop, cast this and steal someone's $200 card. There's not a real sort of cards that play cards your opponents have, but Seared Fate is one of the only ones that prevent you from playing your own deck. A card that many magic players will likely recognize is Bridge From Below. It's a rather powerful card that creates a 2 2 zombie token whenever a non token creature is put into the graveyard from the battlefield. It does get exiled from the graveyard should a creature ever go into the opponent's graveyard. So, why is it weird? Because it doesn't really do anything unless it's specifically in your graveyard. The effect only works at the graveyard. Despite being a permanent, if you put it on the battlefield, it's a completely dead card that does absolutely nothing. Even in the official rules, it states that, quote, this is a bit weird. Games like Yu-Gi-Oh! have garnets that you don't want to draw, but Bridge From Below takes it a step further, where you don't want to have it in your hand, field, or deck, and only want it in the graveyard, or else it's just a completely useless card. I think that's enough for now. There are plenty of weird cards I didn't go over in this video, and I wanted to try and keep it for once that don't require extensive game knowledge to understand how ridiculous their effects are. Who knows, maybe I'll do a part 2 to this video. If you want to see that, comment down below, and while you're down there, leave it a like and subscribe to this channel for more card game related videos. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.